Hello, happy Friday, everyone. I am Meredith. I am here with our message for the 26th of January, 2024. We're using Sawyer's Path to tune into the energy atmosphere of the day. We have the sun in Aquarius. The moon is in Leo. Uranus retrograde for one more day. And a whole bunch of cards. Let's see what's on offer to us in the tarot. Our first card is... Hey, here comes the world again. <laughs> I think we had this card first at the beginning of the week. What a great way to finish out the week. Uh, reward of all your prior investment. We've talked a lot about it all week long. Huge manifestation energies available to us in the now. And an opportunity for us to pause and consider how we are investing in the oncoming. Next two cards. Nine of Cups, the Wish card, the Dream Come True card, paired with, oh, the Seven of Cups. Subtract the Seven from the Nine, you get the Two. So there's the message yet again. Show up in the way you desire to be met. So what's going on here with the Nine of Cups and the Seven of Cups together? There's a lot of fulfillment here. And as I just said with the world, there's consideration for how to invest in the oncoming the seven indicates a whole lot of option available to us. Where do we want to spend our energy? So when you see the seven of cups, many people call this the spoiled for choice card. There's too many options, so oftentimes nothing happens. Too many choices means no choice for a lot of folks. This is an opportunity for you to really tune into your heart center through that nine of cups Think about your dreams coming true and think about what means the very most to you, what's being nurtured in your heart space. Now, also keep in mind, we've had some big doings, astrologically speaking. We've had Pluto move into Aquarius. It's a huge deal. Really encourage you all to get educated on that. Check out some of your favorite astrologers on YouTube. There's a load of information out there about it. So when you pay attention to that information, the Nine of Cups, Seven of Cups, world combination becomes a little more poignant for you. Now, we've also talked about how we've had manifestation evidence showing up from dreams that we invested in a long time ago, 15, 20 years ago, perhaps, because Pluto spent a long time in Capricorn, about 15 years. So it's gonna retrograde again, from May to October, which is great. Gives us an opportunity to move back into that Capricorn energy and do some serious life work in harmony with our spiritual journey. And then Pluto will go direct again in Aquarius and stay there for 20 years in October. Yeah, so that's why you wanna be thinking about how you're investing in your oncoming, which is why the world is here, the Nine of Cups. Seven of Cups, make a choice, make a choice through your heart center is the message that I get there. Whoa, now we have the star showing up, keeping the faith for your dream, your vision, and an eye on the horizon. And don't be afraid to completely reinvent yourself. I'm gonna draw your attention to uh, how the world and the star card both show their character nude, which means vulnerability, the courage to be vulnerable, and also having nothing to hide, nothing to hide behind. Now we've seen the hermit a bit recently, and the hermit is going to show us what's lurking in the subconscious that could potentially be an obstacle. And in the hermit's lantern, we become enlightened. We're able to see clearly everything that we need to see. So we're not hiding from ourselves here, which is beautiful. Like the ego pops up. It's got plenty to say, lots of chatter that could be undermining, Ugh, right? Uh, I've had it happen this week. <laughs> and I surprise myself with that too. It's shocking sometimes what the ego serves up. Anyway, we're able to witness that and authentically, honestly, vulnerably, and most importantly, with courage, take a look at everything that's in the shadow of the subconscious, and we're able to work through that and swiftly, which is wonderful. Next, 
perfect card. There's the hanged man. So I, I'm going to draw your attention to the portal energy. Look at it here on the world card. Look at it here with the hanged man. This is an opportunity to pause within all of the momentum and action. It doesn't stop the momentum, nor does it stop the action. And what we're doing is we're pausing to consider our nine of cups and where we want to take the energy. Where's the energy most concentrated for us and where do we bubble up and overflow with love happiness joy and bliss that's the direction to go in this is why the seven is here this is why when you do the math on these two cards together you come down to the two of cups so that we can pause and make sure we're showing up in a way that we desire to meet our dreams how beautiful is that and then whoa Look at this, now the Eight of Cups. So we have the Seven, the Eight, and the Nine of Cups. Lots of progress, lots of transformation. This card has us taking a look back at eclipses. So consider the eclipses in the fall and see what is showing up now. This may be the pause we're taking to be in consideration of what we have been currently holding in heart space. Give ourselves the opportunity to compare that to what we've been nurturing also for many years, how do they align is a great question, which could also help point the direction in where to invest your energy. This is a transformative card, this Eight of Cups, because it walks onto the Nine of Cups. The action in the cards is that it's departing the Seven of Cups. Let's keep in mind also that the seven of cups as a seven is about bringing heaven to earth within our emotional well-being, emotions within the suit of cups themselves. So we move through this energy by keeping a keen eye on what we've held the faith for in the longest for ourselves consistently, let's say, through the reward energy of the world, we pause while the momentum is still flying right along and we journey through our own subconscious to land here in the Nine of Cups, making our dreams come true. Huge, huge blessing. Bottom of the deck, what's going on behind the scenes that the universe is assisting us with? There's the King of Cups. This is self-mastery and it's divine masculine energy. So it's self-mastery in action. There's there's no stale energy here. There's no real pause at all. There is room for consideration and we're taking it and we're staying aligned with our intuitive gifts and we're taking action on our intuition. Whoa. Wow. Here's the queen of cups now and look at them face each other. I love that. Yesterday we had the queen and the king of pentacles. So today we have the king and the queen of cups. Lots of emotional energy for us. It's very enriched. It's very empowered because we're feeling centered, grounded, and stable in heart space. Thank you, world card. So we're able to see our blessings, take stock of them, and continue to journey with them and reinvest in them. These two are emotionally awake, aware, alert, and extremely intimate with their world. So this is a great intimacy in self-relationship and is the balance of our divine masculine, divine feminine in our emotional world, which helps really fuel how our dreams come true and manifest through that nine of cups. Lots of transformation going on. Next, page. <laughs> Page of Pentacles. Core meaning on this card is invest in what grows. And we're doing that. This is why we're taking stock, hanged man, of everything that's in momentum right now. And then, look at this. Ace of Pentacles. Bringing us to the next card. Four of Wands. Happiest card in tarot. Invest in what grows because that's what's happening here. We've got another portal right here on the Ace of Coins. And one more portal here on the Four of Wands. This is huge. And we're moving deeper into our happiness, which means that there could be some chaos in evolution as change takes place. We saw a bunch of fives earlier in the week. So be prepared for that. Things might look messy. They might feel messy. 
but they're coming together in the most amazing way. Hang in there. Angel answers, confirmations, questions, put them to the deck as I shuffle. I'm going to relate this to the cards on the table, but you take the message for yourself in a way that's most relevant. <laughs> We've seen this card a bunch lately too. You're ready. You are ready to receive everything you've been dreaming for next. Be assertive, falling out of the deck, not a problem. And we're doing it in a really graceful way. As if we need the reminder, but there it is. We'll take the card. Listen to your intuition. The king and the queen of cups are definitely uh, whispering that to us in the cards. <laughs> Shouting is more like it. And then we have perfect timing, divine timing. Everything's coming together in the now in a way that is so surprising and delightful. Final word on the reading from Angels and Ancestors. How is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? White witch, be the light. You are the light. You really are the light. <laughs> bring it. Bring the light. Bring the love. And make your dreams come true. Have a beautiful weekend, everybody. Continue to enjoy the Leo full moon energy. Peace, joy, happiness. Namaste.